This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. A video has been circulating on the Internet for months called Captive, K-A-P-T-I-V-E, a CGI rock video manipulation of the Dragonfly aerial drone photographs that first emerged in May to June 2007. Not only is it a manipulation of the original photographs, the CGI operator named Chris Avery took My Earth Files podcast news reports about the dragonfly drone phenomenon and edited in my voice and voices of people I've interviewed without asking permission. Now, in April 2008, he has sent a letter to io9.com explaining his manipulation of the photographs and states that since making his video, quote, I have been accused of being the originator of the whole drone saga, and the photos were in fact just my viral campaign to promote the eventual video. This is definitely not the truth, unquote. You can see Chris Avery's entire letter at my news website, earthfiles.com, in the report entitled, Wingless Dragonfly Sighting on March 31st, 2008. The truth is that a dozen people in 2007 contacted me about dragonfly body-shaped aerial craft each had seen. Their reports span a timeline of 20 years from 1987 up to mid-November 2007, including California, Louisiana, Arizona, Alabama, Arkansas, and Oklahoma locations. Now, another dragonfly aerial craft eyewitness has emerged, a sighting as recently as Monday, March 31, 2008. Two private investigators who were hired by an international group to track down dragonfly drone eyewitnesses in the United States, talked to me on Tuesday evening, April 1st. Tom Davis is the owner of T.K. Davis Investigations in California, a company he formed after retiring from police detective work. Tom hired another retired police detective, Frank Dixon, to join him on the T.K. Davis Investigations of the Mysterious Dragonfly Drones. This week... Tom Davis told me he met with a new eyewitness named Cam in Scotts Valley, northwest of Capitola. It was Capitola where eyewitness Rajman allegedly photographed another dragonfly drone above power lines on May 16, 2007. Tom asked Cam if she would talk with me in a taped interview for Earth Files and Dreamland Internet Radio, and she agreed. Her sighting was at 10.15 a.m. on Monday, March 31, 2008, when she was working in her kitchen while her boyfriend, Jeff, was doing yard work outside. And I was working on getting breakfast ready, and I have a pan rack that hangs from my kitchen. And so up above my pan rack are two big skylights. And so I was in the process of getting ready to reach up to grab a pan from the rack when all of a sudden I caught some movement up in the skylight. And we live right under a flight path. We have a lot of airlines that go over. So at first I thought that might have been what it was, but then it looked a little smaller than a commercial plane, you know, like the 747s or whatever. And I know they're like at about 30 or 40,000 feet, I think. And this thing was lower than this. But then I thought, well, maybe it was a jet, military jet. But then all of a sudden I started realizing that, wait a minute, there's no wings, no sound, and we had the windows open, the door was open. We should have been able to hear something because you can hear planes in the kitchen. And all of a sudden I realized it had this huge, huge, long nose on the front of it. So it was a really, really long nose, and the body had a round shape. I saw a bit of what I thought could have been a tail that was another round shape. But I had my hands up trying to figure out how long this thing was. And if you held your hand straight above your head and a jet that's flying, you know, a commercial plane is a couple inches, this thing was about maybe an inch and a quarter. So it was really, really high up there. It was hard to tell how long it was. I didn't have a whole lot of reference. But I had seen pictures later 
that showed a lot of little spiky appendages coming off of it. I didn't see that, and so I'm thinking it was because it was so high Mm -hmm. that I couldn't see that. It was just too high up to be able to see that. But as soon as I saw it, I went running out the front door to yell at my boyfriend for him to run up and look really fast. You know, there's this thing in the sky. But by the time I got outside, it should have still been there, like planes are, and it was gone. It was just gone. I don't know where it went, but the path it was taking, we should have still been able to see it by the time I went outside because the speed it was traveling, it wasn't a horrendous fast speed. It was long enough where we should have been able to see it somewhere in the sky. And from the time I got to the front door, it was just gone. But it was just odd that there was absolutely no sound at all, and he had been working outside. And so he had no reason to look up because there was no noise. Did you see a ring in which you could see the sky through the ring? From what I saw, it was so high up. I'm not positive whether there really was a ring that I could definitely see in that or not. To me, it seemed more like it was kind of a stainless steel kind of color. Right. It didn't seem really super shiny, but again, it was so high. It was hard to tell, and the angle I was seeing it at was kind of like I was looking underneath it, but since it was heading away from me, at an angle, I don't think I got a really good look at exactly the bottom of it, and I sure couldn't see the top of it. It could have had a ring in it because it could have been a little bit lighter in the middle, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell whether I could see sky color through it because it was moving. I did a quick sketch as soon as I came back in the house because I didn't want to forget what I saw. And so I ran back in the house and drew what I saw on just the closest piece of paper I could find. Oh, it was a brochure for a plant (laughs) that I had ordered. And so I just took an ink pen and sketched out really quick what I had seen. And that's the pad that says Lily on it. That's right. What was it about what you are seeing that made you think this is not a helicopter? Well, the main thing was that I've never seen a helicopter that had a huge long point on it like this thing did. And it was really, really long. To me, it seemed like it was longer. The point of it was longer than the body was. Mm -hmm. And the body was more of a rounded shape. You know, it kind of came out a little bit on the sides. So it wasn't perfect round. I don't know if there was a little, maybe a kind of a triangle edges on the side of it. And then the back, the way it looked, but there's no way that was a helicopter. You would have heard a helicopter. It didn't move like a helicopter, It, you know, and with no sound. Still didn't look like a helicopter. A helicopter has a really distinctive look. And they don't have that huge point coming off the front. Right. And it didn't have wings to be a jet plane. It wasn't like any kind of shaped object I've ever seen. And to not have any noise, we can hear planes here. You can hear helicopters, and they go over a lot. And with being in the flight pattern, you hear planes, and you hear personal planes like Cessnas. You hear them all the time, and with all the windows open, there should have been sound. If it was a helicopter, there should have been sound. Is it fair to say that what you saw in the sky with your own eyes had, in general, the shape of a dragonfly? Um, yeah, except with no wings, but it did kind of have that shape, you know, with a long point in the front, except that I've seen pictures later on after I saw this. I kind of did some checking to see if anybody saw something like I saw, and I have heard that they go the other direction, but the one I saw, the point was the direction it was going. So mine was kind of heading tail first, I guess, Mm -hmm. if that was considered the tail end of it. But to me, it was the front because I haven't seen these before. And so what I was seeing was the long pointed end was the part that was heading forward. Now, that was the morning of Monday, March 31st. Yeah. How did you come to talk with Tom Davis, one of the private investigators, investigating these dragonfly drones? Well, this is a real interesting story. My boyfriend, Jeff knew about the Capitola sighting that we had up here, and he had been checking all this stuff out on his own and had some ideas, and he had emailed him about some thoughts on it. Jeff did show me a picture of the Capitola picture that was over a telephone pole. And when I first saw it, I looked at it, and I'm thinking, you know, I thought, oh, it's probably nothing. So I kind of dismissed it, and I wasn't paying much attention to it. Jeff still was, though. Well, anyway, when I happened to see this thing in the sky, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that kind of looks like what he was talking about. 
I didn't see a lot of the bottom part hanging off or the top like the one photo, but it sure had that long pointy tip on it, and I've never seen anything else like that. And so when I told Jeff about it, he said, no, we should talk to Tom about it. And at first I didn't want to because of the coincidence that here Jeff's been talking to him and doing the emails, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, my girlfriend saw this. So I didn't think he would think I was credible. But it really happened. And so the more I thought about it, I thought, okay, well, these guys are investigators, you know, retired sheriffs. So if he wanted to hook me up to a lie detector test, I had absolutely no problem because I honestly saw this. So I thought, well, okay, you could go ahead and call him and email him and tell him because I would be willing to do the lie detector test so he would know I was telling the truth. And so I think that's what made it to where I was okay with him doing this because I know I could prove it. What's really interesting is within five minutes after this thing headed north from where I am, a little Cessna headed south that was about that height, you know, about the 1,500 or 2,000 feet. And you could hear that, right? Right. Oh, definitely hear it and see it. So it made me realize how high that other thing must have been. And then a little past that, a plane came south, heading south, that looked like a military. Jeff thought it was probably a military plane because of the amount of engines on it. And it had that white trail that comes out the back of it. But I was really curious, did anybody see this on radar since those two planes were the other direction not too long afterwards? Did Jeff have the impression that the third object, which would be the military plane, may have showed up because of the presence of the dragonfly? He just didn't really know. He just thought it was kind of a coincidence that all of a sudden here there's this big military plane. But it seemed like it might have been like one of those kind of big cargo kind of planes. But it was high enough to where it did have that white trails coming off the back of it. And we don't see those that often up here. Cam made another drawing of the Dragonfly aerial body for EarthFiles.com on April 2, 2008. What intrigues me is that when I asked Cam to look at all the 2006 and 2007 Dragonfly photographs and pick the one shape closest to her own sighting, She picked May 2006 in Birmingham, Alabama. That aerial dragonfly craft was also above a power pole and photographed by a military subcontractor. The reason for this selection, Cam explained, are the triangular wing projections from the sides of the ring body. She thought the round body of her Scotts Valley sighting had protrusions to the side as well. Further, the segmented tail in the Birmingham May 2006 photograph reminded her of the segments in the much longer tail of the craft she saw on March 31, 2008. When you look at a map of the locations where people have seen or photographed the Dragonfly aerial drone in California, it's from Big Basin's Redwood State Park and Saratoga to Scotts Valley and Capitola and then going east to Yosemite National Park and Sequoia National Park. Private investigators Tom Davis and Frank Dixon also think that the May 2007 dragonfly drone photographs by the man who called himself Chad were taken not in the Bakersfield region, but up closer to the Capitola area. Directly to the east of the parks is the China Lake Naval Weapons Reserve. Further south, near the Northridge Mall, a suburb of Los Angeles, another eyewitness on May 17, 2006, at 10 p.m., saw a green glowing aerial object shaped like a horseshoe crab with a long tail. Located 150 miles northeast of Los Angeles, on the western edge of California's Mojave Desert, and east of Yosemite National Park and Sequoia National Park, is the Naval Air Weapons Station at China Lake. It is the high desert home of the Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division. That is where the Navy and Marine Corps have developed or tested nearly every significant airborne weapon system in the past five decades, according to their own websites. If any Earth Files viewer or podcast listener sees the wingless Dragonfly aircraft, photographs it, or has information about the military's involvement or confrontation with dragonfly drones, please email me, earthfiles at earthfiles.com. Confidentiality is always honored.
Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 